The ability to upscale your videos to 4K using AI just took another leap thanks to Topaz's new video upscaler called Astra. It sharpens and enhances detail with a simple drag and drop interface and today I'm going to show you how to use it as well as a deep dive on how well it works. So I'm logged into Astra and all I need to do is drag in my Hulk video and I'm in the interface. I can choose precise or creative, speed or quality, 1080p or 4K. I'm going to switch to 4K to see what we can squeeze out of this. I'm going to stick with precise first and I'm going to go for quality. But keep in mind down here, you can actually clip out what you don't want to render and just sort of select a portion of what it is that you want to render if you don't want to render the whole video. And of course you have preview over here as well, but you can essentially move this around by grabbing this handle and choose the part that you want. If you want to zoom in on the timeline, you can do that here also. But I'm going to actually choose the full video to demonstrate the full 12 seconds because I want to see exactly what this thing can do when it's really cranked up to full. I click render and it enters my queue up here. And once it's finished, I can click on it and download it. And then we're able to turn this low resolution mid journey video into a full 4K render using precise. And you can see it stayed pretty true to the original video, just cleaned it up and upscaled it. But if I put the two side by side, I zoom in a little bit and you can see how fuzzy the mid journey video is and just how clean and crisp the upscale is. And it's done a great job of maintaining the original video detail whilst making it a bit cleaner and a bit better. Keep in mind the original video is 832 by 464 pixels, very low resolution to the 4K of 3840 pixels wide by 2136. So that's a pretty big step up. But now that process is pretty much the same, but we're going to head over and go to creative and subtle to see what results we get with that. Then we get this video here, which is a little bit sharper, has a little bit more detail added to it. And I'm going to do a bit more of an in-depth comparison soon so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But overall, that looks pretty solid. But if I decide to head back into Astra and switch over to Bold, then I get a video like this. It's sharpened everything up, including the weird arm veins, to a little bit more of a level. It is smoother and more detailed, but some things are just a little overcooked and there's a few funny little artifacts. But that is the nature of creativity when using models like this. Essentially, the higher the creativity level, the sharper and more detailed the upscale can be. However, because of this, it can venture a little further away from the original layout. So precise doesn't have as much detail, but it keeps the image closer to the original while moving through the creative spectrum can help you to improve the quality, but you need to find that balance before you start to venture a little too far from the original video. And you can see from these little examples here where I've zoomed in on some of the details, how it gets sharper on the right, fuzzier on the left. Even the background, of the image gets sharper even though it's out of focus the lights have a little bit more precision to them on the creative area on the right and a bit fuzzier on the left now before we get too in depth with the comparisons of different types of videos i want to touch on another feature so we've seen how well the upscaler works so sticking with subtle in 4k what if we adjust the frame rate you'll notice there are two things we can do here one i can just increase the frame rate up to 120 frames a second or 30 frames a second so i can do that but also I can add slow motion. So if I wanted to slow it down to say two speed, what it'll do is artificially create frames to smooth out the motion, but also slow it down and add more frames in between. So using AI, it will detect from frame to frame what it needs to do to smooth out that video. I render that and I have the original video top left to show the actual speed and then the slow motion. You can see it's so smooth. It does a great job of adding and generating those frames. But I've also increased the frame rate from 24 to 30. So it's smoother than it was originally, but also slower. So if you need to create longer AI videos on some platforms and they just need to be slowed down, this is a great way to add frames and get that slow motion effect that you're after. But enough of this video, let's get into the comparisons to see what works, the strengths and weaknesses, and compare different styles of video so you can see what you can get out of this platform. Starting with some mid-journey videos, this cat dressed as Batman, if I go to the subtle creative, it looks pretty good, and the bold creative, it steps it up a little bit more. Now notice from the original how the eyes change across the spectrum and are really, really sharp on that final image. However, the final image adds a bit of fur to the mask, but Subtle seems to have that nice balance. However, all of them have done a great job with the fur and the general sharpness of the image. We've got some awesome details on the bat symbol, including stitching on the Creative Bold version, which I think is a very nice touch. But overall, Creative Subtle seems to have the best balance. Because even though Bold looks sharper, I really can't look past the fact 
that there's a little bit of extra fur on the mask that I didn't want. But ultimately it's handled this mid-journey image exceptionally. But again, another mid-journey video at a low resolution and I didn't try precise again because I was never really happy with the plasticness of this. And Subtle did a great job of smoothing it out, making it better, but Bold really finished it off. It added the detail I wanted and made things a whole lot more impressive. Now this is where the differences become really apparent. You can see from the original to the subtle how it's done a great job of maintaining the look while smoothing it out. But the bold is just next level. Especially you look straight into the eyes, the eyes actually look like real eyes as opposed to this kind of faded, dull, soulless look. Even the lips, the makeup, the skin texture, it's all there down to the hair and the detail in the jewelry hanging from her hair. Everything in the bold made this the perfect choice for this video, despite the fact it was not really the best choice for some of the others. So you do need to find the balance and pick the one you think is gonna work best for you. Now, everything we've done has been sort of very 3D looking. So I thought I'd try one of the more photorealistic mid-journey renders. And you can see with precise, it's kept it looking pretty much the same, smoothed it out. Subtle has improved the sharpness a bit, especially around the teeth. But when I move up to bold, that's when it starts to look really sharp. However, it now starts to look a little bit artificial. Now, focusing on the subtle, you can see how well it's improved. However, there's a bit of a warp on the left one that subtle has fixed up on the right. Watch the left, and you can see there's a little bit of a weird shutter of the eye. But we go back to the right, and that's gone. So that's where some added creativity can also fix some issues in your video. But another example of not just fixing, but adding details, this really old Leonardo AI video I did. It adds detail with the subtle, and of course we move up to bold, and it's a completely different level of detail in this video. But side by side, notice how the walls actually have detail and elements to them, and the plants hanging off the walls actually have some texture. But even the water, not just the waterfall itself, but the texture of the water has been regenerated and looks a lot better than the original. But notice how well it works with some of the issues of this video. When he turns, there's like a blotchiness to the shoulder. And when I go to Creative Subtle, you can actually see it's a little bit minimized. And when I go to Bold again, because that creative is up to max, when he turns, it's a lot neater. The Salt fixed completely. You can see in the original how bad it is. The Subtle improves a little. In the Bold, it just neatens it up a little bit more. So it doesn't do a perfect job, but you can notice the gun, the face, and everything looks much sharper in the upscale as well. But this has all been AI video made from AI art. What about real footage? How well does it handle it? Well, I've got this footage here that I took from Pexels. I downloaded it in low resolution, and I also downloaded the full resolution video, which I'm showing you right here. So how does it compare when we upscale the low resolution video? Now Precise, I think, has pretty much nailed it. It looks real, it looks sharper, it's done a great job. Move up to Subtle, and it's a little bit smoother. Things are starting to look slightly artificial, but you can get away with it. It's very smooth and looks pretty good. But Creative Bold just goes a little bit too far, and it starts to look too artificial. This is why I think Precise or Subtle are probably going to be your best chance for getting a good result using uh, footage of real people. But here's where it gets interesting. I have the original 4K here and the upscale from the smaller video, and you might not necessarily know which is which. They're actually pretty comparable. Now they are different. The original has a little bit more noise and grain and the upscale actually looks a little bit neater. But moving up to the creative subtle and see how much cleaner it is. Things are slightly artificial when you look at them side by side, but if you weren't looking side by side, you might not be able to tell the difference. I think this could be a great tool for cleaning up some of your footage. You could actually downscale it or even just upscale it straight from its original size and get a nice clean image with a few minor AI artifacts. So my final approach would be if you're actually going to use footage or people that you need to keep the same, stick with precise, experiment with subtle. If you're creating something more stylistic, such as art, 3D animation, or even just a really big detailed scene, you can start to experiment with the higher creativity levels because you can add detail, but expect that things will change just a little bit. So you need to be able to see how much you need the image to change before deciding what sort of area of creativity you're gonna play with. Now there is something else I wanna show you that can be a really cool thing to experiment with, and I'm logged into the Astra homepage here, and up top I'm gonna to go to my videos. And you can see all the renders I've created down to these ones here. I'm gonna click on this one, and for one, I can do a comparison here to see how it's turned out. I can see that it's used Creative Bold, I can see how it's been upscaled and the frame rate. But what I can also do is come over here to download it. And once I've downloaded it, I can drag it back in. And now I've uploaded the video that I already upscaled with the extra detail that's been added. And I can actually go from Precise to Creative, again to Bold. 
I've got it on 4K and it's already at 30 frames a second, so I can leave the frame rate as it is. And I can re-render this much bolder video, but with higher creativity to develop it further. So I click render and you can squeeze a little more detail out of the video. Once again, I pop them side by side, you can see it's slightly sharper. It's not a huge difference, but it is something if you really just need to squeeze a little more sharpness or a little more detail out of a video, you can give it a try. It actually worked better with this video here. As you can see, the texture and everything, it just, it actually has a little bit more of a noticeable presence when I sort of reiterated this creation. But how does this compare to Starlight, which is another generative video upscale I've released by Topaz not that long ago? Well, there are some step ups here. It comes down to the extra creativity you can get out of Astra. It allows you to develop the details a bit more. You notice on the left, things look a little bit fuzzier with Starlight and a bit sharper on the right. Looking at the various bits and pieces of the Hulk's armor or like uh, jewelry, it just looks a bit more purposeful and a little bit more detailed. So also there were, I noticed that the water that sort of like splashes up in the air in Starlight has a few little artifacts. But when I switch over to the new Astra versions, those artifacts are kind of smoothed out. So it's really fixed up a few little minor issues, but the creativity allows you just to take it that step further. And this creativity, as you can see with this video, the amount of detail added to the face, which I mentioned earlier, just shows how well this works. They look the same, maybe at first glance, but when you inspect the details, they've really cleaned up this video model quite a bit. I think the extra creativity is probably the strongest point though. However, with the extra creativity, much like the image upscaler, there can be weird artifacts like this dog here, how when you crank the creativity up to bold, he gets kind of like an eyeball inside of his mouth. So that is another thing that uh, it kind of like when you go too far, it gets a little bit of like a wild, wild west vibe about how it handles certain details. In my last Starlight video, I tried this super grainy clip of a Bruce Lee interview. And when I upscaled to Starlight, I got this which has done a fantastic job, but there are a few little artifacts that pop up on the face and in the teeth if you're looking quite closely. When I switched to precise quality, initially I couldn't really see the difference, but when I studied the artifacts, they were definitely minimized. They weren't completely gone, but they definitely improved a fair bit. But even precise has slightly improved these details. You can see some of the hair on the chin wasn't there in the original interview. It's just kind of blurred out. Also had a little fanged formation on the teeth seems to be a little bit improved. Again, it's not perfect, but pretty decent. But again, the extra creativity doesn't always help. Like in this one here, he doesn't really look like him anymore, although it does look sharper, just not quite right. Now you start to see just how powerful this is. The ability to upload AI videos or your own videos and upscale them to 4K while maintaining a lot of detail, finding the right level of creativity is really quite powerful. But on the Astra page, there's also a gallery of videos you can check out. So example, you can see how well this video turned out of this woman. Now using the exact same preview tools as you have available for your own videos, you can use this slider to see just how well it's actually improved. So if I play this video, we can see how it looks before and after. Even better, if I change the view up here, I can use my mouse wheel to zoom in and look at the side-by-side -side comparison. So you can check this all out with your own videos or any of the videos on Astra. You can go through, find certain videos to see how well it's actually handled them. So I highly recommend checking that out. Now I also wanna mention that if I come up here, these are the credits I currently have. And I had these from my Topaz Video AI account, but I can come down here to buy credits or manage subscription. If I go manage subscription, I can add credits, but generally speaking, you need to sign up for a plan. So if I zoom out, you can see the little clips I've been creating have been anywhere from sort of like 10 to 15 credits or so. Uh, and $39 a month for these little clips means you get a fair few of those little clips if that's what you're trying to create. But if you're looking to upscale much larger videos, this might not be much. So as a professional, if you're looking to create much longer upscale videos, you might need to go for Plus or Pro. So you can see the spectrum starts from about $40 a month up to about $300 a month, and you can always buy more credits. This is the additional credit price. So you can go in, buy more credits using the same uh, approach from here by basically going into my uh, little credit box up here, and it's quite easy to top them up. So that is a really, really awesome tool. However, I know it comes at a bit of a premium, but considering the technology being used and the power used to actually upscale those videos, I think this is well warranted. But also, if you're looking for a local version of something like this, 
Astra is not available locally, but you can still use Starlight with Topaz Video AI. There's Starlight Mini. I will post a video on the screen right now that you can check out. It shows you how well Starlight works on a whole bunch of other videos I've tested. Otherwise, if you want to check out Topaz Astra, then there's a link in the description below that you can use. Otherwise, that is the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.